the most misused, underutilized, biggest wasted talent of 2020, in my opinion, is Alistair Black. Now, before I get into explaining why I believe this is the case, I'd be interested to hear for you guys, you, you watching this video, who you think's the biggest wasted talent in pro wrestling of 2020. It's a very interesting kind of debate and discussion. So comment that down below. And while you're at that, while you're at it, hit the like button because I always appreciate that. So anyway, now that that's said, Alistair Black is someone who coming into the year had plenty of momentum. Alistair Black from about September onwards, when Paul Heyman really took over as the executive producer or whatever his title was for Monday Night Raw, when Heyman really took over, Alistair Black was one of the guys who got the emphasis, got the spotlight, got the treatment, got the push from Paul Heyman. Paul Heyman was a big supporter and a big fan of the work of Alistair Black because Alistair Black had some character going. He had a bit of a different feel and appeal to him. Yes, right off the bat, I want to say, because I know, I know these comments are coming down below, 100% Alistair Black, is he some mic working genius? God no, Alistair Black on the microphone is not good, okay, he sounds dry, he sounds bland, could he have had a manager, could he have had someone to really work with him and fix that, of course, and in my opinion, I'm going to cast your minds back, way back seven months ago, to my what if the elitist took over WWE video, in my opinion, if WWE had a couple of brain cells, what you do, you have Alistair Black continue with that really creepy kind of I don't know how you want to describe it, you have his character, the creepy kind of style, and you give him Zelina Vega as a manager. Have Zelina Vega turn into whatever her name is, Treya Trinidad or whatever, and have you know her go goth and whatnot, have her really be this kind of dark manager. Because I think instead of having Zelina Vega with Andrade, and then not really do much, instead, you could have done that, because, I don't know if you know this, Zelina Vega and Alistair Black are married in real life, so it makes sense, it would it would be cool, it would fit, and I think that would go a long way for both of them, in giving them something meaningful and something purposeful to do. So that's what I would have done with Alistair Black to really erase that whole he can't talk thing, because literally his wife is one of the best talkers in the company, at least from what we've seen so far in 2020, and now she's been released, so you can't even do it anymore. But for the time being, for what they could have done, Zelina Vega and Alistair Black would have been a perfect ideal combination, and they dropped the ball on that. So that's one thing. As far as Alistair Black, he was coming into 2020 with such momentum. He had three and a bit months of Paul Heyman giving him week after week, squash win on Raw, squash win, squash win. Yes, was that getting a little bit dry? because Alistair Black would just go in there, hit a black mass on some loser, and then walk out. Yeah, it was getting a bit bland, but at the same time, it was building him up, building him up, giving him win after win after win, giving him a meaningful thing to do. Then, he had the matches with Murphy. The matches with Murphy were good matches. Did they put over both men? Mainly Alistair Black, I'd say. Murphy, they were good for Murphy as well, but they were just good matches. The, the fact they did three of them, the, the last two were all right. The first one was really good at TLC 2019. The other two were fine, I guess. Then you move into 2020. Alistair Black's one of these guys who had legitimate buzz as far as winning the Rumble. Nothing amount of that. Alistair Black moved into WrestleMania, had a meaningless undercard match with Bob Lashley. That match really... I don't, I don't even know how I remember that match happened because... It, it was like second match on the card of night one, was it? Or something? I don't know. It was just a thrown away WrestleMania match. Then coming out of WrestleMania, Alistair Black continues to squash random guys in the Performance Center. He qualifies for Money in the Bank. And then he gets thrown off the roof. And really ever since that happened at Money in the Bank, Alistair Black, his WWE career quite literally got thrown off the roof with it. Because Alistair Black... Boy, oh boy, the last seven months for this guy, oh my. Ever since that happened, and then Bruce Pritchard took over from Paul Heyman as the lead executive producer, the second-hand man for Vince in charge of Monday Night Raw, really ever since that happened, oh my god, Alistair Black, where do we begin? This guy, what's even happened since then? Alistair Black, for the past seven months, has been in this wasteland of mediocrity. He's been in this position where... He's been a part of nothing that's even been worth batting an eyelid at. Like, some some people will probably watch this video and say, Oh, but he had a feud with Kevin Owens, man. But, man, 
He had a feud with KO. What do you mean? Nothing of substance, nothing of purpose. I mean exactly that. He was in a feud with Kevin Owens. Who's going to remember that? I only remember that because, for one, I watch wrestling pretty much every week because I do this channel, and because Alistair Black's the topic of this video, and I, I somehow remember that. Like, Alistair Black versus Kevin Owens, I, what were they feuding over? They were feuding over what? I, I don't remember. It was nothing of note. And then outside of that, Alistair Black had his eye, I guess, removed or something. And then, I don't even know, he had his eye injured by Seth Rollins, did he? I, Alistair Black the last seven months has just been floundering. Nowadays on SmackDown, he's on the SmackDown roster and he can't even get booked. Which I find so... Not depressing, I just find it disappointing. Alistair Black came into this year with so much momentum, with three months of squash wins under his belt. And nowadays, well for the past seven months, he's been sitting and catering, twiddling his thumbs, having a random match on WWE main event. Not, not even wrestling, having uh, popping up against Kevin Owens for a three week long feud, going away again, sitting in catering, doing nothing on SmackDown, not even getting booked. Not, they can't even find a storyline for this guy on SmackDown. They can give Chad Gable and Otis a storyline in which they're training together, but Alistair Black can't even get TV time. And it's just like, well, look at this guy, who as I said earlier in the video, is someone who with that act, yes, we've seen that whole creepy, mysterious, dark type gimmick. We've seen that in pro wrestling. I'm not saying it's some groundbreaking, one of a kind new gimmick, but for what the guy had to offer as far as, you know, just in general, the character, the presentation, potentially having Selena Vega or Treya Trinidad be his manager and really provide something for Alistair Black, because no one knows him like she does. They're married for God's sake, okay? The Zelina Vega could have cut a plethora of compelling and intriguing and engaging promos for Alistair Black. These two could literally have driven in a car for six hours from one show to another. Well, not because of COVID this year, but you get my point. They could have literally just spent all this time together because they're married, discussing potential plans, potential angles, what they could have done with Black's character. They could have really done something with that. But instead... Zelina Vega worked with Andrade, someone who has no, no, nothing going for him and it doesn't make sense why they're paired. Instead, that was the decision they made. Instead, Zelina Vega worked in a stable with Austin Theory, Gaza and Andrade for some reason. Instead of working with her husband, instead they just went with that. And then th this was all prior to Bruce Pritchard taking over. Then Bruce took over and clearly based off everything we've heard in the past few weeks and months, Bruce Pritchard does not like how NXT talents are trained. Bruce Pritchard does not like how NXT talents are taught and how they're educated on sports entertainment. So clearly based off that, clearly based off personal bias, personal prejudice from Bruce Pritchard, based off that, Alistair Black has been either in catering, in random meaningless tag team matches featuring Humberto Creo against Murphy and Rollins. He's been in a three week long feud with Kevin Owens that had no story. That's been Alistair Black's last seven months. Now, I find it so disappointing because Alistair Black, he really did have something to offer. And I say did as though he's been released or did as though he's dead. As far as WWE TV week in, week out, he might as well be because he hasn't been booked in like a month. He has no direction. There's nothing going for him. He's sitting backstage and catering. I'd imagine maybe maybe Vince and Bruce have some plan for him, but I highly doubt it. If he's not even on TV at the moment, they, they don't care. He's just he's just another toy on the shelf. That's what he is now. Alistair Black, you know, Paul Heyman had a little play with the Alistair Black action figure. Bruce Pritchard saw the Paul, um, the Alistair Black action figure, said, <laughs> don't care about this, threw it back on the shelf, and now Alistair Black is just sitting there in mediocrity, sitting there in obscurity, sitting there on the catering shelf, sitting there just doing nothing which I find so disappointing. Alistair Black, I talked about this in my What If The Elitist Took Over WWE video. There's so many options you could have gone with this guy. There's so much you could have done as far as storylines, as far as fleshing out a character. I think having Zelina Vega as his mouthpiece would have been just perfect. It's, it's like one plus one equals two type stuff. It's so simplistic, but it's WWE, nothing amount of it. Now Alistair Black is just another toy on the shelf. So it's disappointing, but it is it is what it is at WWE, so yeah, that's been the video. Leave down below your biggest waste of talent in 2020. Do you think Alistair Black's the biggest waste of talent in 2020? Do you think something else, someone else? Leave that down below. I'd be interested to hear what you guys have to say, so yeah. Like, comment, subscribe, and drill. See ya.